What's the word, y'all? Check it. So Bleach Report puts together an article of top 10 players that can break out this season. And it got people talking. I am people. Because I created my own personal top 10 list, so it'll be interesting. But a lot of people were upset about it. I need people to realize, not for Zach Buckley's case or Bleach Report case, but for the sake of this video, breakout can mean so many different things. Like, for example, there are some people on my list that were literally not in the rotation for their team, and my breakout for them is, hey, they're going to be a quality role player. And then there are some people that I think are going to break out to all-star caliber. So, you know what I'm saying? This is just my own personal list. You're going to have your own group of people, and that's okay. Because let's be real. We can watch as much film as we can, much film as we want. It's, it's almost impossible to correctly pick breakout players because we're not working with them in the offseason. We can watch every Rico Hines run video imaginable and still not predict what players are going to break out. These are just the people that I watched last season that I think can take a next step. Today's video is brought to you by GLD. GLD was founded on the idea that everyone should be able to afford high quality jewelry pieces that deliver confidence and help complete your look. Y'all know me, man. I'm just a normal, regular, degular dude, but when I got the GLD on, I'm feeling kind of different. G.O.D. has collaborated with the MLB, the NFL, the NBA, Marvel, and Call of Duty. If you want to rock something supporting your favorite team, you can do that. If you want to rock something supporting your favorite superhero, you can do that with G.L.D. To complete your look and get 33% off your G.L.D. order, you got to hit that link in the description. That's gld.shopgld.com slash Kenny. Thank you to G.O.D. for sponsoring this video. First, let's take a look at Zach Buckley slash Bleach Reports list. The top three makes sense. Um, Jalen Green, Tyrese Halliburton, and Kay Cunningham are first options on lottery team. So they're going to get up a lot of shots. They're going to get up a lot of counting stats. So breaking out for them makes sense. Laurie Market is an interesting one. If there's any a time to break out Laurie, it's now because there's nobody ahead of you right now. Colin Sex is probably ahead of you, but not a lot of people ahead of you. He's also going into year number six. So it feels weird to say breakout for your number six, but we do have late bloomers in NBA history, so I guess it's possible. Michael Porter Jr. feels weird because he's already under a max contract. You know what I'm saying? Like he was given a max like a season and a half ago. So his breakout might have already happened, but I can hear you saying, hey, he's coming off those back injuries. Boom. I don't like the trending topics. I'm watching Thursday Night Football as I'm recording this video and, and Tua just got injured. Prayers up for him for sure. Anthony Simons makes a ton of sense. When Dane was out last season and they traded CJ, he was an absolute stud. Devin Vassell is a very good pick personally. I think a lot of people are assuming that, that Keldon Johnson is going to be the guy to break out. And both of them can to break out but i really do believe in Devin vassell a little bit more than keldon not saying that keldon is a scrub because again a lot of people take things out of context Jalen smith 1000 percent will be on my list james wiseman and lexay poku i don't know how poku's here i'm not i'm not, no disrespect hopefully he does break out for the sake of okc fans but it's just weird to have him here and not some of the other people that that are on my personal list or that are in the league so i will not put any dupes here so like the top three players for sure i would have on my list and number eight and number seven would for sure be on my list if I was doing dupes, but I'm not. I'm also not doing them in any order. So don't be like, oh, Kenny got this guy first and this guy 10th. Th there's no order whatsoever. So let's start off um, with a guy that it's, it's a bit iffy to pick him as a breakout player because what his team did this offseason, I, I don't want to say buried him, but added a lot of people at around his position that might cut into his potential playing time is Davion Mitchell off night. Second half of the season slash when De'Aaron Fox went out with his injuries or whatever, he had a lot of games where he looked really good. Obviously, the defense is there, but they also brought in Malik Monk. They brought in Kevin Herter. And obviously, De'Aaron Fox is their best player, their star caliber player. So Davion is not going to have a lot of opportunity to be a starter or to really showcase all the things that he can. But like maybe I'm a year ahead of the breakout, but I do believe that he showed us a lot at the end of last season for me to feel confident enough to say he's going to have a, a better year than last. But the breakout, might, I might be stretching it considering everybody else is playing this position. My next guy is RJ Bear. Whenever Bleach Report, The Athletic, ESPN puts out these articles, top players under this age, RJ Bear doesn't even get an honorable mention. Um, breakout players, RJ Bear never gets an honorable mention. And I understand there's a portion of NBA fans that are turned off by RJ because he isn't efficient. His efficiency numbers are bad. And, I, and I'm a guy that was on that island for a pretty decent amount of time, but I have completely changed face, y'all. I do believe that RJ hasn't been given the right tools to be the player that he can be. And I think this offseason for the New York Knicks might be the one to put the step in the right direction. Let's be real. RJ Baird is not a shooter. He had the one year where he shot near 40% or around 40%. And then we got to the playoffs and the Atlanta Hawks decided to leave that man open. Like make him, make him drive. 
And that's one thing he's amazing at. There's not a lot of people in the NBA that are better at getting to the rim than R.J. Bear. But the real progression in R.J. Bear's career is what he does once he gets to the rim. Because he will get all the defenders there. And instead of looking at option two or option three, hitting that corner, swinging that, he's automatically going up. He's automatically going up. And I think that the progression for him is to be able to, to play make at a higher level, to hit those guys. And I think what opens the game up so much more for RJ is what they decide to close their lineups with. If we get a Julius Randle Obi Toppin lineup, and I think Todd Thibodeau already said that he doesn't love that, just like today he said that. If he can get that type of space in because Obi Toppin can shoot the shot, and Julius Randle, who knows what we're going to get from Julius Randle. R.J. Barry game can blossom to a whole new level. So R.J.'s got to get better at his playmaking once he gets to the basket and, and actually finishing when he's there. Next guy on my list is a guy that I think 90% of NBA fans, NBA Twitter's in love with. It's Alperin Sengun. Still don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right, but I'm not going to take Eurobasket as the place to like evaluate overall talent because like Laurie Marketing went to Eurobasket. Then you have, everybody goes to your Dennis Schroeder was a superstar. You go, you know, it's a whole different game. It's basketball, but the rules are different and everybody knows that. So I'm not looking at the way Sengun played in Eurobasket like, oh, he going to translate that. But boy, did he look good. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying. He is one of the more smart bigs in basketball, and he's going into year number two. I don't know if he'll ever be at least an average defender. I don't, I don't really know. But he's extremely crafty offensively, and he's already had so many highlights that like NBA nerds just like drool over. And I'm NBA nerds, you know what I'm saying? And with him not having to deal with having Christian Wood on the roster anymore, they just traded Marquise Chris like three minutes, <laughs> like three minutes ago. I guess Derek Favors is there now. It's not. It's not a lot of depth at the overall center position to take minutes away from him. So it should be more than getting 20 minutes per game, which is basically what he got last year. I'm just imagining Tari Eason cutting down a lane and a behind the back, behind the neck pass from Al Benson going, baby, I'm here for it. This next dude got a total of 600 minutes last season. And I recently did a deep dive and watched nearly all 600 of those minutes. And I might be a year or two early on this breakout, but it, it's Delano Banton. Now, if you follow me on Twitter, I recently tweeted about him a couple different times because I'm I'm enamored by his game. It's the Toronto Raptors way. If he's 6'7 or above, get him onto the roster and we gonna make things work. And I'm still trying to figure out if I want to make a video about him. So I, I won't talk about it too much. But I do really like a lot of the things that I saw. He's fearless. And when you get to the open court, there's not a lot of people that can stop him. So I think Banton is going to work his way into the actual rotation. Obviously, there's so many talented players over there. He's not about to be over Scotty or Pascal or Fred or Gary Trudeau. Like, he's going to be like Tith Man in the rotation type things. But I think you're going to see a lot more Banton this season. And I think a lot more people are going to open their eyes to him being a really solid player in the future. My next guy is Evan Mobley. You know, I might as well I might as well put Evan Mobley and Scotty Barnes together because let's be real, both of those guys are studs. Uh, but the reason I put Evan Mobley first is not dealing with his on court like counting stats, traditional stats. I'm not thinking about those because I don't think those are going to be insane. But when I say breakout, I think he's going to break out to be one of the most important and best defensive players in all of basketball. I mean, he already got all defensive votes last year as a rookie, and I think he's going to get more adjusted to the game this year. Is going to have an amazing defensive season, and I guess the offensive game is going to look easier now because he's got more options around him. So, yeah, give me give me Emope and Scotty for all the reasons I've talked about in previous videos. This next guy put on some extra muscle i saw a media day and when he played in summer league again it's the same thing i said about your basket summer league is a whole different monster you can look great in summer league and, and not do anything in your nba career um trey murphy when trey murphy was drafted he was looked at to be this three-point specialist and he saw he showed some of that and then we got to summer league and his three-point shot wasn't falling but he was doing so much more now i'm not anticipating him to come into the season on a team that's already has so many shot creators be like hey give trey murphy an isolation possession but that three-point shot will still be there probably he can play the cam johnson role for the new orleans pelicans easily easily the next guy is a 40 percent three-point shooting big who's young and his team just made some decisions to open up that backup big position because he's not going to start. It's Zeke Naji. Zeke Naji has shot near 40% in his two NBA seasons. And after his rookie season, he ended up getting more minutes. I think he's going to get more minutes than last year. Now, I was just watching his, um, his career high game against the New York Knicks in the Garden. There's still a lot to be desired when it comes to him defensively. Like, he gets caught in no man's land a ton. 
Um, he gets like three second violations every once in a while, something that you don't really see in the NBA anymore. But Zeke Nazi as an offensive threat, his three point shooting with Jokic being there and them having a full complete roster. I do believe that Zeke Nazi can play a big role on that second unit for the Denver Nuggets, which is something they did not have last year. The second unit was not very good when Jokic wasn't on the court. Nobody was hooping. And now uh, I think Zeke Nazi can really help that. Next one, I, I, I flipped the coin, ladies and gentlemen. I flipped the coin on the Warriors' two young guys because they already did James Wiseman in the, in the Bleach Report one. Uh, Moses Moody and Jonathan Kaminga. And I feel more confident in Moses Moody's game, but I think the way that the Warriors play, Jonathan Kaminga might become more important. But I, I do believe the shot-making ability and shot creation that Moses Moody possesses um, is going to be important and, and going to surprise a lot of people. Wendell Carter Jr., I've, I've sung praises about Wendell since the moment we traded him away, which is crazy. Once he's on your team, you're like, we want more. And as soon as you trade him away, you're like, dang, I wish we had him. But no, I've sung praises about Wendell Carter since we traded him. And last year, he took a huge step with his jump shooting ability. And I'm only going to assume that he's going to get better in that aspect. I mean, when he was here in Chicago, he was saying that um, he would love to play more four. And the Orlando Magic have allowed him to play at least some four. When he was with the Bulls, there was no opportunities for him to play four. He actually got that opportunity now. And now, of course, he's probably going to play full-time five now with Paolo being there. But you saw that defensively, he's still that man. He's a undersized center, but positionally, he's very good. And the offensive game is coming around more and more every single season. Put the goggles on. He's a whole different monster. And his last spot, it's, it's a wild card, um, and it's my homer pick. It's Ayo DeSumo. With the Bulls losing Lonzo Ball, somebody has to take in and, and play a lot more minutes at point guard. It's weird not to have a lot of hope for Kobe White anymore. So Ayo DeSumo kind of took that in Bulls Nation after a good rookie season. So that, that's 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 my 10. Again, breakout for me means a lot of, lot of different stuff. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like. Let me know who your breakout players are, and I'll see y'all soon.